All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to day 131 of our Bodyweight Exercise Program for Weight Loss. I am your host, Jacob Carroll, and today we are going to have a great hour-long workout. We got 40 seconds of work to 20 seconds of rest, and I apologize. I'm a little bit late joining it in. Um, had a personal training session this morning, just coming in a little bit late. So apologize for a little bit of a late start here, but, you know, I'm going to do my best. You know, get us right into the workout, keep us, you know, up to speed. I mean, sometimes I end up talking for these first 10 minutes before we even get into the workout anyway. So, you know, you probably didn't miss much anyways. Maybe I'll just kind of skip all that, get us right into the workout, because I know I am getting stuck here a little bit late. Um, we got a little bit of antivirus protection thing coming in. And it is coming in very bright that window, which I'll fix in a second. But, you know, we're just going to get right and things here so um all right nobody made nobody made the workout thing um that's cool all right um sorry i guess um there was the workout uh, routine for the day but apparently um adam did not change that so all right already getting here started late and i gotta change something real quick Give me a second. Uh, how, how do I edit this? Jeez, man. All right. Sorry. Sorry for the loss. But while I'm editing this, let's tell you a little bit about what our topic of the week is, which is fitness. Going back to this pillar today. And, you know, we got, we're talking a little bit about foam rolling actually in today's session. So a little bit different from what we're doing, not really going with the research. I'm actually going to be taking some suggestions, you know, from people watching what type of, you know, exercise you want to see foam roll for what, you know, parts of the body. And so going to be going with that today. So if you have any thoughts, want to learn how to release any specific muscles, definitely just let me know. We're going to be going through that. Then at the end, I got my foam roller here with me. And what else? I really apologize. I thought this would have been um, updated by now. Just want to be able so you guys can see what we got coming up in the workouts. I think we're pretty pretty much set. Again, I apologize. I feel bad I'm coming in here late, but it just doesn't make sense to go through the workout if you don't know what's coming coming up next. Sorry, this is actually the last one. All right, now we can put it up. Let's show the routine now. This is what our actual routine is for today. The one was from last week. Um, so yeah, now that we actually got that set up, um, I already wasted a bunch of time. We're just gonna get right into the workout. So we got we're gonna go into our warm up first. I say going right in the workout, but obviously got to always warm up first to get the body ready for the workout that's coming up. So we got a 40 minutes of work, 20 seconds of rest. Sorry, I'm just pulling out the timer. We're just not prepared today. And you know what it happens. Probably not the first time it's happened here on the stream. And it probably won't be the last, but you know, it's not a consistent thing, I would say. But you know, we're, we're going to have our issues some days. But all right, now we got everything officially, officially set up. Let's get into this for real. Talking about fitness here today on the stream. Let's get to it. All right, so. Hopefully that helps a little bit. So first warm up of the day. We're just going to be getting the hips moving a little bit. So I'm going to be doing these open the gate, close the gates. Just moving that leg out, coming back in. Just moving through. We're going to be spending at least you know, a good minute here getting those hips warmed up. I'm just going to do a little bit of camera changes real, real quick. I want you guys to keep working with those. Open the gate, close the gates. 
Um, it's just a very blinding right now. With the camera, I gotta close these curtains a little bit more, I guess. Let's see if that helps at all. I keep working with those open and close the gates. One more second. That looks a little bit better. All right, now that we got those open and close the gates on, we're gonna be working on the hamstring a little bit. So we're gonna put one arm up into the wall or you just do the stand, but we're gonna be bringing the heel up to the glute. Just getting that hamstring nice and ready. And same thing, we can go start working on the other leg now. Same thing. Again, you might not need a wall here, but it's always good to have that extra bounce. Just bringing that hamstring up each rep. All right, keep moving with that. Just a few more reps there. Again, so there's a lot, a lot going on on today's stream. A lot of adjustments happening. Okay, that's not good. Is that better? I don't know why it's just coming in so fuzzy, but all right, we'll be good enough. We are on to our next move. Move this out of the way. Sorry, the most shot warm up of this whole stream. Um, we're going to be open up the mid back here, arms out in front, moving that arm back towards the wall, rotate body, open up that mid back. Again, I know I've already apologized a bunch on the stream today, but. I just want to say, I promise if you're seeing this for the first time, I promise the stream is not always this organized. I literally just did not finish my personal training session until, you know, this stream was literally about to start. And then I, this stream wasn't prepared um, from the last time. Um, so that kind of a little bit of a setback here. But, you know, we're, we're moving and grooving now. We got a good workout coming up. So let's get into a little bit of some more shoulder movement. We're just gonna be doing mm -hmm. some shoulder circles. It's great how my arm just disappears into the curtain when I'm doing this. Just rolling those shoulders forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's roll the other way now. Keep on roll. And now we're going to open them up even wider now. We're doing small circles, still going backwards, just opening them up a little bit more. And now let's go the other way. Take out those arms a little bit. Because we are going to get started here in just a few seconds. All right. Hope you're feeling good. I am too. We got our first move coming up. We got our floor touch. I know you've seen these once before. We are just bending down like we're picking a box up off the ground, like an object. Just reaching down to the floor. Work within your range motion. So, I want to bring. Just those hands right down the hips. Kind of feel if you get to flat back position right here at the knees. Maybe you want to just keep right there. Maybe go a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. It's all up to you. We're getting started though in three, two, one. Mm -hmm. And let's begin. Reach down to the ground each time. We're at 40 seconds. I'm just going to turn that timer down so it's not blasting in your ears. Mm -hmm. Great work. 20 more seconds to go. Great job. Here you go. Finish strong here. Last 10. Five, four, three, 
two, one, and done. Great job, everybody. All right, floor touch is done. We got a row fly combo coming up next. It's going to go quick. Bend over position. Pull up. Pull up close to the body. And then out to the side. You got five seconds. We're going in three, two, one. And let's begin. Mm -hmm. work halfway there you know hold this position can be a little bit tough at the bottom so one way you can mix this one up is put those hands there on the knees you can bring the elbow up and then out to the side so then you can kind of support yourself a little bit so it won't be as intense on that upper body let's finish strong everybody we got three two one and done really good job of that our next move coming up we got our vertical press so I'm going to do is come down my knee so it's easier to see. You do this standing up. Just going to be punching to the ceiling. Each and every rep can go both at the same time. If you're feeling ambitious, we're going in three, two, one. Let's go. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I have those workouts up there. Because, you know, I might not have time to explain them, you know, through each and every rep. So as long as I get through once, you know, you might have, you'll have a general idea you know what's coming up you see vertical presses you know punching the ceiling that's what this motion i think it's technically called but you know we want to relate it to something maybe a little bit more transferable that's what i like punching through the ceiling kind of cues in again full you know extension overhead great job three two one and done great job our next move, we got the dead bug. You got on the ground, you got standing variation. You could just be going, reaching up with the knee with the arm. You can go from the wall, same thing. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Or we go in front of the ground. We're gonna start up the top though. Three, two, one. Let's go. I'll show the ground variation. You know, these things go quick. We're just gonna warm it up with that wall variation. So you're just gonna be leaning into the wall here opposite arm, opposite leg, coordinating the limbs with the core. And so again, on the ground variation, which I'll demonstrate real quick. You can see me, <laughs> you know, same, same concept, knees up, hands up, let that foot come out. Five, four, three, two, and one. Great job with that one, everybody. All right, our next move coming up on the list, we got squats, regular body weight squats. Just dropping down like we're going into a chair and then coming back up, we're going in five, four, three, two, one. And let's begin. Drop into a squat, coming right back. Good work, everybody. You got 20 seconds left. Remember, still, just pretending like you're sitting in that chair. Great variation, too. You can even have, you have a chair, couch, something to sit on near you. You can go with that same variation. Just sitting down, standing up, not making it too complicated. We got three, two, one, and done. Great job. Squats done. We got push-ups. We got push-ups or flies. So for a push-up, you can go from the floor, from the knees, from the ground, whatever is a comfortable position for you. And for a fly, you just go on right in the back, bring the hands together. We're going to three, two, one. Let's go. I'll show you some more push-up variations um, as we move through the set. But, you know, I just want to make sure you at least had a general idea of what was coming up before the timer started. So... We got for our, some of our push-up variations, obviously, you know, we can go from on the toes, just regular push-up. We can also go from our knees, a little bit more modified variation, still a great exercise. Same thing, you can even just do holds at the bottom of this position. Maybe you're going to be doing holds from your knees, maybe you're doing holds from your toes. 
or a great, great variation as well as going from the wall because it was farther. Those feet are away from the wall a lot harder. That's going to be three, two, one, and done. See, we got a comment in the chat. Luke, good to see you in here. Sorry, stream got started a little bit late today, and we were off to a little bit of a rocky start as far as getting things set up. But good to see you in here, man. We got our Y race coming up next in three. Thumbs up. Three, two, one. Let's go. Just essentially making a Y. We come down a little bit. Maybe my arms won't disappear into the background as much. I don't know if I'm just really pale or my lighting is messed up today. Probably a combination of both. But essentially, he's bringing those hands together in the middle, pointing those thumbs back to the wall as he raise those arms overhead. Keep moving. He's still got just about 10 more seconds left with this one. Maybe feeling those traps burning a little bit, feeling those shoulders heating up. Three, two, one, and done. Great job with that one. Last move here of the first round. We got quick feet, a little bit more of a march in place. So you, you're going to really choose the pace here. You can you know, just get those feet marching. Maybe you want to keep them low. Maybe you want to keep them a little bit higher. Maybe you want to grab a float. We're going quick feet for 40 seconds. Three, two, one. Let's go. Same thing. Kind of like you're jogging in place even 40 seconds if you want to keep it like that. Or you can really bring it into like a, more of a sprinting march. You really have options here. And same thing. You don't got to go fast at all. The same thing. This is a long workout. We got an hour to go here. Maybe you're like, hey, I'm still heating up. I really want to pace myself here. In this first round, that is perfectly fine. Same thing, that might even be the best thing. Remember, we got an hour long workout. We're going to try to go through this five more times. You know, if you can make it through two, three, four, doesn't matter. You're still going to get a great workout. We are done with that move. So, no, that means back up to the top. Floor touches. First move, we're working on that deadlift, hamstrings, glutes, all that good stuff. Reaching down to the ground like you got to pick that object up three two one let's begin same thing you can even use an object as a reference point and if it's a pillow even though it's not going to have a lot of weight maybe you do maybe you've got some textbooks on the ground and you're just going to practice picking up you know that textbook dropping it the same thing make it transferable to everyday life i promise you you're going to probably be picking things up off the ground for the rest of your life you know, it's like, it's trying to be a situation where you got to move something, you got to pick something up. Maybe we're going to bend down to tie your shoe. You know, who knows? You got to be prepared. It's one of the fundamental movement patterns here with the floor touch. You know, we're always going to have this one here in the workout. Three, two, one, and done. We're going to be mixing up, having some more variations coming with that hinge, you know, the next week or two. But, you know, we're still kind of breaking in these hour-long workouts. We don't want to be thrown in a new volume, new intensity, and a lot of new moves in at the same time. We'll keep it familiar to start by row fly combo. Three, two, one. This one might suck a little bit after doing those deadlifts. You're already using those glutes, those hamstrings, quads. Now you just got to hold stability, find that same position. But remember, it's feeling a little tough here. Put that hand up on the knee. Moving up. With that shoulder. I think you're just trying to get that fist to shoulder height. Didn't think maybe you're wrapping out a few on that side, mixing it up, and a few on this side too. That's great. You gotta do what works for you. That's really the name of the game here with fitness in general. You gotta do what's right. Three, two, one. I know that's really vague, but I mean, you know, doing what's right for you. you don't wanna go too intense. You don't wanna go at my intensity. That's not the intensity that's working for you. Maybe yours is higher, maybe yours is lower. You gotta really gauge, you know, especially here when I can't see any of you face to face, you really gotta gauge your own intensity. That's the one part of this aspect that I really can't pick for you. But we got dead bugs, or no, vertical presses. Three, two, one. Sorry, a little bit late on that. Just a little bit of a rant. Same thing, I give you the variations. I give you the suggested time frames, but at the end of the day, you know, can't see any. It's a it's a good thing about it and a bad thing about it, I guess. But I mean, I'm sure you know. I'll probably prefer to be, um, you know, doing this on your own too. I probably would as well. 
I feel, you know, a little bit more intimidating just being in there with everybody else you can see it as well. So three, two, one, and great job. All right, we got our dead bugs coming up. Remember, this is one where you got a few options. Remember, standing, it's main concept is opposite arm, opposite leg. You do that in the wall, on the ground. Remember, from the floor, same thing. Try to keep that low back down. Opposite arm, opposite leg. We're going from the ground. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm letting that arm come down towards the ground. I know it's kind of going off camera a little bit, but main thing here, keeping that low back on the ground. You really want to feel this in the core. You don't want to be feeling it in that low back. It's one of the jobs of our core. It's really to protect the spine, protect those organs you know, that are right in those very important areas there in our core. Almost done here. Five, four, three, two, one, and done. Great job. Those that was a pretty intense variation. A little bit advanced there. So, you know, great job if you're trying with those. We know they're tough. May not get through the full round with those, but great job. We got squats coming up next. We're going in three, two, one, and let's begin. Sitting in that chair, standing up, moving and grooving. You control the pace and the depth here. See, the best thing part about the scrum, you know, maybe, you know, just getting, maybe you're, you know, like feeling it. You're like, hey, I'm going to try to really get down low in these. I'm really feeling today. Mobility's feeling good. Same thing, maybe you're like, you know, I'm just going to go with some halfway down, good comfortable depth for yourself and same thing everybody's got different limb lengths different ankle mobility knee mobility and you know so that's also going to play a role in your squat depth but great job with that one done with that we got push-ups coming in next get a drink take a quick break if you need but you only got 10 seconds grabbing some water real quick all right three two one Push-ups, I'm going to be going from my knees. 40 seconds is a long time to be doing push-ups. The same thing, I like to say this on here. You know, if you're doing this five days a week, you're probably not going to want to be doing this push-up variation. You know, every day you got to get those time muscles to relax. You know, this can be pretty fatiguing. So, you know, that's why we have that fly variation in there. You know, maybe you just did a bunch of push-ups on Monday. You're like, ah, I got to mix it up. I got to change something. Maybe even if it's mid-set. You know, go, working on these flies, great way to still get the chest moving, still get the shoulders moving. Done with that one. Great job there, everybody. Push-ups done. Y race coming back up. Remember, I'm doing this for my knees. You don't have to. I'm just doing this. I'm make it a little bit easier to see. But coming up in a Y formation, thumbs back to the wall. Three, two, one, let's go. And remember here, work within your range. Don't try to force it. I'll show you an example. Right here, this is about my range. I'm not completely overhead. You now, right here, this is kind of where I get a little bit of stoppage. And you can see, you know, once I get a little bit here, if I try to force it overhead, you know, I'm bending through the back a little bit. We want to keep this all in the shoulders, all in the traps. Don't want to be compensating that low back a little bit. So, same thing, only go within the range of motion that's comfortable. I kind of go till I feel a little bit of tissue resistance. It gets to a point where it's, I feel like, okay, I can go a little bit, but I'm getting a little bit of resistance here. I'm going to stop, keep working at that range. Done with that one. Great job. You know, just the ability to, you know, work in that range of motion. We still got a bunch of sets here. You're going to push that range of motion a little bit each set, each week. So, you know, don't feel like you got to force it. You know, let that movement come naturally. All right. Why raise them? We got quick feet. Three, two, one. Let's go. Same thing. I'm going a little bit more low impact version, but I'm still picking up the pace a little bit. This is just one variation. Same thing. If you're kind of getting into this jump where you're, you know, switching feet kind of in midair. You know, that's going to be a little bit more impact on the knees, on the ankles, you know, on those joints. So, you know, you can still pick up the pace and do this in a joint-friendly way. 
you know, make sure you get that foot down. And so it's kind of like, you know, you have stability that whole time. You're not, you know, jumping onto one leg. You are putting that foot down and switching legs. Three, two, one, and done. Great job with that, everybody. Back up to the top. Third round about the end. That's going to mark that halfway point. That means you're almost a half hour through this. Floor touches back to the top. Is going quick. Three, two, one. Don't get much of a break here till the end. You're going to be keeping that heart rate up that whole time. That's why this program can be so effective for weight loss. You know, in this hit style. You know, a little bit longer work periods, short rest periods. Because, you know, even if you're not doing the, you know, most intense variation of this movement, you're still keeping that heart rate up that whole time. You're still making, you're going to still be burning calories even in those rest periods because your heart rate is still going to be up and you're not going to, you know, have the time to, you know, really let your body cool down completely there. Three, two, one, and down four touches. 20 seconds down. So I just was... Saw something. All right, sorry. Distracted. You still got five seconds. We got row, fly combo. So I saw like a website notification. I'm just curious. Three, two, one. I didn't know. I was like, dang. Never mind. But anyways, <laughs> row, fly combo, hitting those back muscles and those leg muscles at the same time. We don't call this a full body workout for nothing. Got some moves in here like this. I don't even know where I feel it the most. Do I feel it in the back? Do I feel it in the core? Do I feel it in the legs? I don't know. Great job here. You got 10 more seconds. Keep wrapping here with this one. Great work. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job with that. So we got a comment chat. Thanks. I'm not mobile, so I'm trying my best. Uh, that's what it's all about. There's variations in here for everybody. And same thing, Luke, if you feel like a, a movement isn't working for you, uh, we'll find a variation for you on the spot. Just let me know. We always like to do our best, you know, make this accessible for everybody. Have everybody get a good movement in here. All right, we got our dead bug. Starting in three, two, one, and let's go. Same thing, this just can be one arm, one leg. Just up, you don't got to do this one from the ground. Same thing from the wall. Great variation. Kind of pushing those hands into the wall. Right arm, left arm, alternating with each rep. Great work, everybody. Keep it moving along. Same thing, that arm height, that knee height doesn't got to be too high. Just get that leg up off the ground a little bit. You're going to be getting those legs moving, getting those core keeping those calories burning great great job everybody we got our push-up coming up here next remember wall floor to the ground now uh, from the wall oh well wait till we start but i missed the countdown three two one let's go so if you're going with this wall variation here i know it's kind of hard to see you know again those further those feet out are harder it's going to be so if you're just pushing away from the wall but you got those feet out a little bit further you're going to make it a little bit more challenging. The same thing, you just be up against the wall. This motion of your shoulders pushing forward, really important, important for that shoulder mobility. And, you know, again, making sure all these muscles are working together. So, or the same thing. That's why I also love this fly variation. You know, if it's difficult getting to and from the ground, this works just as effectively. You know, just standing, you just open those arms, bring them back, open up those shoulder joints. And some good movement in there. Great job with that, everybody. So push-ups slash flies are done. That brings us back to the Y raise. And I'm going for my knees. You don't have to great to do this one standing. This is just for ease of seeing. Up in a Y formation. Three, two, one, let's go. Remember, that's the name game. Working within your range of motion. That range motion will get better over time. That strength is going to get better over time. So, you know, don't feel like you got to force it. Same thing if your range of motion is up here. I want you to keep working right here. You, know, you don't got to be getting all the way overhead. I like the things like getting that range of motion where you're kind of greasing the groove a little bit. Where like, yeah, this range of motion feels really comfortable. It's not that challenging. 
And then, you know, you just start repping away reps in that, you know, comfortable, you know, range of motion. Then, you know, your body kind of says, hey, we're comfortable right here. Gets a little bit of trust. Maybe lets you mm-hmm. expand that range of motion a little bit. If, you know, this is locked down by the nervous system, a little bit of neurological tightness. Mm-hmm. So really, really great job with that. I know I'm rambling very fast. We got our quick feet coming up in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. And remember, you don't have to be going crazy right here. You can just get those feet marching in place. You're pretty much just going to keep that body moving for 40 seconds. That's really the goal here. The same thing. This is a pretty intense workout here. We're in the hour. We're on day, we're on day 131 of our exercise program. So, you know, just put that into perspective here. We're getting towards the end of this thing. You know, this is, you know, some pretty intense workouts, really intense volume, things like that. So, you know, being able to even, you know, get a quarter of these workouts done at this point, if you haven't been joining in from mm-hmm. the program, is, you know, a testament on its own because, you know, we've really been ramping this up from day one, really building up to this point. So, Great job with that, everybody. That is halfway through, half hour down. Really great job. You know, again, short rest periods here. We got about five seconds, and we're back into those floor touches. Three, Mm -hmm. two, one. And let's begin. Just coming down and coming back up again. This one could be pretty taxing. You can modify. Let those hands come down the hip. You control the pace. You're still going to be getting those hamstrings. You're still going to be getting a lot of these muscle Mm -hmm. groups. And same thing, if you're feeling fatigued, well, that's a good sign that you're kind of getting your body to that adaptation point. You're saying your body's, you're challenging your body. It's going to have to get stronger. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the way I like to think of it. You know, adaptation is not going to happen on its own. You were, there has to be a stimulus for adaptation to occur. Mm-hmm. Done with that. Great job. You got 20 mm-hmm. seconds. Got those row fly combos. I'm going to be coming back in more adaptation. I think I'm just even fits along with what we're talking about this week with fitness and all that good stuff. All right. Three, two, one. Mm-hmm. Row fly. Close to the body and out to the side. This one can be really tough, especially after doing mm-hmm. those floor touches. Nothing wrong with modifying here one arm at a time. Mixing it up. Great work, everybody. Come on, halfway done with this set. You got this. Don't give up on me now. Pace yourself if you have to, but you got this. Great work, everybody. Five, four, three, two, one. Mm. Great, great job, everybody. Good work. 20 seconds and we're coming into that dead bug again. Mm-hmm. Remember, so it's really about here using mm-hmm. the core, cording those upper limbs and lower limbs. So, oh, wait, wait, I lied. We got vertical press. Sorry, three, two, mm-hmm. one. I'm out of wax. Mm-hmm. Punching the ceiling each and every rep. Honestly, it's because my cheat sheet, I have dead bug and vertical press both written as exercise three for some reason because i guess i can't count <laughs> i apologize almost missed that punch that ceiling come on i know we just hit the shoulders you're really working them a bit here a little bit of overhead i mean not the other one isn't overhead but you're still working these shoulder muscles good amount here great work finish strong three two one and good to shake those out you got to great job Come on. Next move. Now we got the dead bugs for real now. So remember with those dead bugs, try to find a wall if you can. I think that's one of the most effective ways, you know, and you can kind of just lean in opposite arm, opposite leg. Three, mm-hmm. two, one, and let's begin. This is a really tough mm-hmm. move. Just even getting that pattern down with this one is really tough. It's one of the trickiest parts I can say is myself. As a personal trainer, this is one of the ones where it might not be that, you know, people might not have, might have the core strength to do this, but they're having difficulties, you know, doing that coordination between the lower and upper limbs. It's a really tough aspect and something that our core is really involved with considering, 
No, it is attached to the upper limbs and the lower limbs. I'm just going to be showing that ground variation for anybody that wants to try it out again. Just bringing that leg away from the body and the arm. Pretty advanced, though. Done with that. Sorry, it was really just showing that towards the end. Didn't really give you much time. We got our squat pattern. All right, this is a tough one. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Let's begin. I'm going box squats this one. I really think this is a great variation. Just sitting down and standing up. Make it a transferable skill to everyday life. Ooh, I just I don't know what about. But I think I said, my, I said this last year in emergency room before. You know, I had a great teacher in grad school. He said, he said, there's one thing you need to be strong enough to do in this life is to be able to get up off the toilet. He said, that's the only, he's like, if you want to have any goal for your strength, it's like that is what people should aim for because it is one of the most you know fundamental skills that leads to like long life independency. Mm -hmm. So those three, two, one. All right, we got our push-ups or our flies up next. I'm be working with those push-ups. I'm gonna be going from my knees. Remember, you can go with the flies, push-ups from the wall, from the floor, whatever floats your boat. Three, two. One, great job. You know, again, just to reiterate what I was saying about the squat, um, same thing, a lot of say that's one of the most fundamental and most physically demanding activities of daily living. So they kind of put that in person like, hey, you know, if you can, you know, sit down and stand up without assistance, then you will be able to, you know, independently perform, you know, the majority of other activities of daily living. So that kind of being, you know, that, you know, gold standard, so to speak, um, for those everyday tasks. Three, two, one, and done. I see we got another comment in the chat. See, I can't do that right now without without hands help. I'm sorry. No, that's perfectly fine. That's why we're doing it. We're building it up to. But so say that I, I say that more so as a fact to say, you know, this is that ultimate goal to work up to. You know, if this is one thing or or just even a lifetime goal. Maybe not if it's even something in the short term. But, you know, the same thing, not everybody's going to have, you know, those abilities. There's also a lot of other factors which, you know, might not even make that, you know, an opportunity for somebody, you know, to be able to sit and stand. But, you know, same thing, that's something, a goal to build up to, keep working towards. That's awesome you're here again. Don't be embarrassed. Trust me, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. You know, everybody starts somewhere. Everybody has different life circumstances. There's a lot of factors that, you know, leads to, you know, the, the state that we're in. You know, you can't just, you know, beat yourself up about it. I like to say, you know, if you're here right now, you're working on your health. You've made a big step in even the mindset factor. It doesn't matter. You know, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have good days. But if you're here and you're making a conscious mental effort to improve your health, you're here watching the stream right now. That's one of the biggest factors. That's what's going to set you apart from somebody else. Do the same thing. It's like even on your worst day, if you feel bad that this is a bad day, mm -hmm. then you've already made a mindset change. But I just wanted to touch on that quick. Trust me, Luke, nothing to be embarrassed about. I actually, I'm really, that's just great to hear that you're here and you're trying to better your health. That's just awesome to see. But why Ray's coming up in five, four, three, two, one and let's go mm. and the same thing look i'm gonna be right here with you we're gonna get you to that goal if that's something you want to be able to sit and stand without support we're gonna get there you keep sticking through the stream same thing i'm always here to help that's why we're doing this we want to help people you know be happier and healthier through fitness mm. and help people reach their health and fitness goals mm. Same thing, if you want anything else individually, you know, do not hesitate to reach out. That's, that's why we're doing this. Keep working, everybody. You got five, four, three, two, one, and done. Really good job, everybody. While Ray is done, we got quick feet coming up. This is that one. You're just going to keep your body moving for that full 10 seconds. It's going to be tough. I know we're getting through. We're here in the third round great job and we're starting 
Just keep those feet moving that whole time. You don't even got to be getting too much off the ground. Just be kind of moving them in place. 40 seconds, a little bit of just kind of jogging in place. Same thing again, Luke. I know I was kind of talking about it a bit earlier, but again, we're, we're on day 131. So, I mean, if you're here working, doing this workout right now on day 131, man, that's just impressive on its own. Go to work. Five, four, three, two, mm. one, and done. Great job. Great, great job, everybody. Our next move, coming back up to the top, start of the first round officially halfway through even though the stream hasn't gone a little longer because i got two little late start but we're starting strong in three two one and let's begin reaching down to the ground remember working within your range same thing keeping those hands on the hip great variation here you can kind of feel those hips come back a little bit same thing you can kind of push off you know the knees a little bit and come back up and same thing you can really pace yourself here if you want to take you know same thing maybe you get a rep you know you're kind of hanging out here at the top you know we're getting in in here deep in the workout we're going for a while now here we go five four three two one really really great job everybody i'm feeling good i hope you are as well we got our row fly combo coming up. I know this one's a tough one. We'll be holding that bottom position, row it up to the side, and then same thing, moving that arm out. Three, two, one, and let's go. Then we be going one arm at a time. Maybe you same thing. Maybe you kind of want to mix them. Maybe you're going to try a few like this, then mix them up. Scan in the fourth round. Might be getting a little bit tired here. So you gotta do what works. Do what's gonna help you get through. Great, great work, everybody. Here we go, last five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and done. Really, really good job, everybody. Row fly combos, we're going back to the vertical press. This one is tough. I know we just mm. hit the shoulders again. The shoulders might be burning a little bit here. So you know, pace yourself with this one. We'll punch through that ceiling. Three, two, one. Mm. Just punching through. You go one arm at a time. Pace yourself. And then if you feel like really ramping it up, we can go both at a time. All up to you here. You control the workout. Great job, everybody. Halfway done with this one. Keep working. Come on, home stretch right here. Last 10 seconds. You know those shoulders are burning. You got this. Three, two, one, and done. That's how you do it. All right. Dead bug is going by quick. You only got about 10 Seconds. Remember the step bug. One. I was just going to the wall with this or the ground. Three, two, one. Same thing. You're going from the wall. Remember, it's leaning in, opposite arms. Same thing. I know we're kind of just doing an overhead version of this. That's why I really suggest you know, the standing variation. You know, even though this is a great way to use the core, you were just doing you know some overhead pressing, and so a little bit of that lean into the wall. You know, won't. You know, make it as intense kind of on that pushing and same thing from the ground. You're kind of working, you know, opposite because gravity is kind of helping you down. Great job here. Just going to show this one again. Anybody wants to try the ground variation? This one's pretty tough though. Three, two, one, and done. Dead bugs done. Squats coming up. Remember, you got to choose. Your variation. Maybe you're going body weight and you're shortening the depth a little bit. The same thing, keeping the hands, kind of helping yourself out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Same thing, maybe we want to go, 
you know, sit to stand, you know, just sitting down and standing up. Great work, everybody. Honestly, I really love this sit to stand variation because I know I probably suddenly broke the record, but I really do think this is the most transferable squat pattern to everyday life. You know, same thing, sitting to standing is going to be something that we are going to be required to do, you know, for a large, you know, for the majority of our life to some extent. Five, four, three, two, mm. one. Great, great job. All right, squat pattern down. We're going to those push-ups or flies. Remember, push-ups from the wall, from the floor, from an elevated surface if you want to go somewhere in the middle. Remember, the more parallel you get to the ground, hard it's going to be. So keep that in mind. We're going in three, mm. two, one. And let's begin. I'm going to be going for my knees. I really do like the wall variation here. It's just not a great setup um, for me. These are just looking at my back. So that's why I normally go, you know, with this um, knee push-up variation, or, you know, really like that fly variation as well, especially if you were just, you know, doing the push-up version, you know, earlier in the week, maybe in the last set, maybe just giving yourself a little bit of a break. Great job. Three, two, one, and done. That's how you do it, everybody. Way to finish strong. We're coming up into our next move. We got that wide raise again. I know a little bit more overhead. Those traps, those shoulders. We're really getting them working here today. Wide raise in three, two, one. And let's begin. Moving those up. Another way we could do this too. You can go one at a time if this is feeling a little bit better. A little bit more kind of a D1. The same thing, main thing here, getting that thumb back towards the wall. Remember, we're always working in that natural range of motion. Same thing, maybe even after doing one of those push variations, maybe your range of motion is even you know, a little bit less because you just shortened, you know, the chest muscles. Maybe you're not getting as much overhead. Three, two, mm. one, and great job. All right. Here we go, fourth round of quick feet. Can you believe it? We're coasting through quick feet. Starting in five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Mm -hmm. Now you could be going with a marching thing, maybe going for more of a stability aspect. Mm -hmm. Grab it onto wall for this also another just great variation. Mm -hmm. You know, you can keep that stability and still keep working on the feet. Same thing again, hip height always optional. We're really just getting those legs moving, marching in place, keeping that heart rate up. Come on, good work, everybody. That's how you do it. 10 more seconds, finish strong. End of the fourth round. Five, four, three, two, one, done. That's how you do it. Really, really good job, everybody. Now what that means, though, we are back up to the top with those four touches. Or, yeah, no, we are with the four touches. I was telling them. All right, three, two, one. And let's begin. Start of the fifth round. Two more rounds to go. That's where it's going to get tough here. You know, there's a little bit of mm. physical toughness, a little bit of mental toughness. Then your body's going to be drained. Keep working. You know, another thing I also really like to keep note of, if you are really, you know, fired really fast out the gate, and, you know, maybe you're really fatiguing right now, or, you know, I was saying this is just an intense workout. If you're feeling mm. pretty, pretty beat up right now, there definitely is a point of, you know, diminishing returns. Not something that you can't get anything out of that at some point, but if you, you know, really, really challenge yourself today, you know, you know, and you're just going to include, there's no shame, in, you know, cutting out there if you feel like you really worked yourself. Mm -hmm. We got row, fly, combo, three, 
two, mm. one, and let's begin. So I know I kind of cut that short, but what I, I guess what I mean is, you know, sometimes you kind of notice that, you know, the quality of, you know, the sets and everything is kind of just declining a little bit. And, you know, maybe you feel like you're not really getting as much out of, you know, the, the exercise and things anymore at that point, you know, something that, you know, especially when it comes to muscle fatigue, if you feel like you're getting to a point where this muscle just isn't getting enough time to recover in between these sets, obviously, you know, take a few, maybe, you know, take a few sets off, mm. maybe try to jump back in, but, you know, don't feel like, you know, you have to destroy yourself to get some gains, you know, just getting to a point where you even feel like you've challenged yourself, you know, that's really what's going to bring upon that adaptation. Really good job of that row fly combo, though. We're going in to that vertical press in three, two, one, mm. and let's begin punching right up overhead. Mm. Great job, everybody. Keep working. Halfway there. That's really what, you know, in my opinion is the driver adaptation. And the, what is needed to drive adaptation is going to be different for everybody. I know I've made this analogy on stream before, but, you know, I really love this using this. So let's finish. Move three, two, one, mm. and done. Great job with that. We got our dead bug coming up next. Remember, from the wall, from the floor, from the ground. Main thing is holding our upper body with the lower body. It could just be... You know, a punch with the knee, even going like this, that's still going to get the core and things like that going. Three, mm. two, one. Now let's begin. Same thing. I'm kind of coordinating the upper body with the lower body. Same thing. You don't got to have to go really overhead here. We've been doing a lot of overhead you know, work in today's workout, especially just coming out from that vertical press. So I don't feel like you got to really... It'll go super far overhead at this one if you're going with the standing variation, especially. Because it turns one to a repressed motion, then, you know, a dead bug. Good work. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Great job. All right, we got our squat coming up next. Here you go, body weight. Here you go, sit to stand. You pick the depth, whatever is feeling right for you. We're going in five, four, three, two, one, and let's begin. I'm liking that sit to stand variation of feeling good to me. I'm gonna keep working with it. Great job, everybody. I just realized I started that whole thing about adaptation and never finished it. But what I was really getting at is that, you know, everybody has different adaptation levels. Um, somebody like, you know, world-class sprinter or, you know, world-class, you know, marathoner, you know, to get any site to keep making gains, you know, at, uh, at the professional level, they might have to, you know, continuously run 120 miles a week, 150 miles a week, just to maintain their current physical mm -hmm. fitness status. For me, if I ran 150 miles a week, I don't think I'd be able to walk anymore. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, I would get to, to just maintain my cardiovascular fitness at my level. You know, I might have to walk, you know, walk for an hour a week where this guy mm -hmm. to maintain his aerobic fitness, he has to run, you know, 150 miles a week. So big difference in what would, what I need to adapt and what they need to adapt. So, Another thing to keep in perspective, you know, if you're challenging yourself, it doesn't matter what level you are at. If you're doing enough to bring yourself a challenge. That's enough to kind of get your body to say, hey, we got to start adapting. And the same thing, if you want to maintain that, you know, coming to that, working up to that same level. I mean, you don't got to keep pushing the boundary every single time. But, you know, being able to do some of the same things that, you know, you were working towards to, you know, cause that adaptation in the first place. So, all right. I know it's rambling a bit. We got our squats. We got our push-ups in three, two, one. And let's begin. I'm going from the ground. Remember, wall, chair, floor. 
flies, you name it. So anyway, I just think that's a really important mm -hmm. to put in a perspective, you know, of adaptation. You know, you see these bodybuilders that are saying, you know, do this, this, and this, four sets of this, eight sets of this, you know, just to grab their biceps. You know, maybe that's what somebody that has been, you know, bodybuilding for, you know, five plus years needs to, you know, keep making adaptation. And same thing. It's going to be different for everybody. Three, mm -hmm. two, one. Same thing. It's like if you know, our body adapts very quickly. So same thing. If you've been, you know, sedentary for a long time and your body is almost adapted, to, you know, to being sedentary. If even, you know, one day a week, a half an hour a week, if you weren't doing a half an hour before, that's going to lead you to keep, you know, making those mm -hmm. steps forward to keep adapting. If you're doing more than you were doing the day before, the week before, you know, the month before, you're making steps in the right direction. That's actually what it's all about as far as adaptation. But great job. Push-ups done. Y raise three, two, mm -hmm. one. And let's begin. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up to the ceiling like you're doing the YMCA. You can go one arm at a time. Just make sure those thumbs are going back to the wall. Great work, everybody. Mm. Keep moving. Mm. More than halfway done with this. I know I'm rambling a little bit in between, but I just think that's just so important to get across because, you know, same thing. I think even for myself, you know, there's times where, you know, maybe I was, you know, there, there was times, you know, in the past few months where, you know, I was exercising four or five days a week. And then, you know, then for a while, you know, I was you know maybe getting one or two exercises in a week. And then, you know, same thing, even though I wasn't maintaining the same thing for a while, I thought, you know, when I came back, I was like, oh, you know, I got to get right back to where I was before. But, you know, that's not how our body works. Hey, buddy, was the 730 stream canceled yesterday? Um, they did not, did nobody stream yesterday? Wait, sorry. I know I'm kind of putting a pause in the workout, but that would explain why I wasn't set up and why it takes some time. Um, somebody was supposed to be streaming on Monday. Did nobody really, did really nobody stream? Um... I will check on that fourth. Um, but anyways, uh, sorry, I'm losing. Oh, we're at quick feet. All right, sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna go send a text to my partners. No, it, it should have been at seven thirty a.m. That is definitely the right time. I'm gonna go check with my partners. I'll send them a text right now. Um, once we get the set started, I'll check on that. All right, three, two, one. Quick feet. Remember, this one's all about just keeping that body moving. I know it's called quick feet. You don't got to be, you know, sprinting in place here. You can be going a little bit slow and controlled with this march. You could be just, you know, keeping that body moving. I think it's 40 seconds of keeping that heart rate up, marching in place. Even if you want that wall for balance, uh, let's finish out this fifth round strong. Coming really towards the end here. You got 10 seconds to go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one, and done. Great job, everybody. Come on. Give it up. That's five rounds on. We got one more rest. This we're really going to test ourselves. A little bit of mental toughness in play. You got 10 seconds. We're starting floor touches. I'm going to get them started, but I'm going to send a message to my partners to see what was going on with the stream yesterday. So right, three, two, one, and let's begin floor touches. Remember, reaching down to that ground, coming back up, moving at the pace. That's comfortable, working on the depth that's comfortable. I'm just going to send this. I have to allow for the time difference, so maybe mixed up. Um, yeah, let me, let me just check. Um, keep working, everybody. Not too much longer. You still got 10 seconds. Uh, and done with that one. Great job, everybody. Moving on to the next move, which is going to be that row fly combo. Sorry for that. Usually I am there demoing the exercise with you. 
to your YouTube watch every once in a while. Long story short, I've lost two pounds and became a bit more flexible. Man, that that is awesome. You know, I just can't even, man, that just makes me so happy, man, that you're here. You've been doing this and you're already down two pounds and feeling more flexible, man. That That's awesome. You know, couldn't be happier to hear that. that that's fantastic. Really happy for you, Luke. All right, we're moving into that row fly combo. Sorry, cut that victory short. We got to get into the next one. Three, two, one. But really, Luke, that's awesome. And that's what it's all about. It's just, you know, you stay here, you keep working on your fitness. And same thing. I know, you know, sometimes it's hard to, you know, just get in that routine where you're in that rhythm and, you know, you're feeling, feeling like getting in here all the time. But, you know, it's a, it's a tough process you know it's a building up that thing you know sometimes they say that if you can do something for three weeks i think it's 21 days that it almost becomes a habit that if you're working on something sorry three two one and done row fly combo is done you know so one thing that's come up in some of those mindset books things i read is that if you've been doing something for 21 days it almost becomes a habit or it almost feels like you know Something went wrong if you didn't do it almost to some extent. So five, four, three, two, one, vertical press, punch in the ceiling. Great work. Keeping it moving. But, you know, that's one thing. Sorry, I, I just lost my train of thought completely. Wow, I really I actually don't even remember what I was saying. I know it'll come back to me. Sorry, this thing is going crazy. Sorry. Five, four, three, two, one. Now I actually remember fourth year comment towards Luke actually just reminded me I was talking about you know the thing of making things a habit and you know same thing it's just you know, sometimes our body just creates adaption if we get in a routine where it's like hey you know three days a week two days a week you know whatever however many days you plan on doing it that if you're like hey for 21 days you always got into it consistently it's those things where it's like almost mentally it gets almost drilled into your head where it's like something i know that's one of those kind of that's came to me after a while now i've been working out pretty consistently for a few years now it's almost like you know if i don't hit that three days a week it feels like something's almost off at that point because you know it's became such a you know ingrained part of my routine now um after a while but sorry i'm rambling again sorry we got our dead bugs in three two one and let's go dead bugs moving on so I'm reading this in the chat. Keep going with those dead bugs. I fell behind above doing the YouTube's recording, but going to try the live streams again definitely helps with the routine. Didn't didn't mean to interrupt. Notice you were live. Oh no, don't. You're never interrupting. I encourage anybody here to come in and join in, speak speak your mind, and using anything. You know, really interact in the chat as much as you can. But you know, that's awesome. Same thing. You know, that's why we want to keep these up in recording because. You know, same thing is sometimes you want to kind of follow along in that plan. Maybe you miss a day here and there. But that's the great thing about these live workouts is that they can even be modified. You know, same thing. Maybe if you're still at the half hour workouts or the 45 minute workouts, you can start from the beginning. Sorry, done with the dub bugs. Great job. But, you know, you could even cut this one in half, cut it in a third, cut in three quarters. And, you know, you're essentially getting those same volumes. The moves haven't changed too much. And, you know, those rest intervals, you know, haven't changed too, too much either. I mean, they're definitely moving up a little bit in the entire volume of the whole workout has moved up but you know same thing you cut this right down the middle and you know they're pretty similar to you know our first you know half hour workouts that we started off with you know in the first quarter but great job with that all right we're coming back to those squats everybody three two one and let's begin for our last time doing squats you know glad to hear that fourth you too luke you know just I don't know. That just honestly just makes me really happy to know people are benefiting from this program. It's something I really, I truly love doing. I love trying to help people. You know, I struggled with my weight for a very long time. And, you know, I don't know, I've, I've kind of found a way, you know, through it, through fitness and, you know, doing, you know, care more about my health. And it took a long time for me to get into that routine. I still struggled 
was eating, you know, things like that for a long time, and even still do, you know, to this day. You know, even when I was in fifth grade, I was over 160 pounds in fifth grade. So, you know, it was a lot bigger, you know, had a lot of issues with my weight and things like that. And, you know, doing, you know, just, I kind of became like obsessed with fitness, I guess, to some extent, like I was really motivated to kind of, you know, turn my things around and it eventually just became a schedule and a routine. And then it was something that I feel like I couldn't go without, I guess, to some extent, but sorry, three, two, one and pushups coming down. I'm going to be going from my knees. Remember, you got variations here. You can go from your knees, you can go from your toes. You know, you can just do holds. You can hold at the top, hold at the bottom. Still going to work those back and chest muscles. You can also, you know, go from an elevated surface. It's going to be a little bit easier than going from the, from the floor, but a little bit harder than going from the wall. Remember, same thing with the wall. Great variation. Where those feet are way harder, it's going to be. And we also obviously got those fly variations. Three, two, one, and done. All right, two more moves. Then we're going to be talking a little bit more about our topic of the week, fitness, challenge of the week, our quote of the week, all that good stuff. But we got two more moves to get through. We got Y raise coming up in three, two, one. And let's begin. I'm showing it from my knees so it's easier to see. Thumbs make to the wall. We go one at a time, both at a time. But just what I was kind of talking about earlier is, you know, I struggled with eating, struggled with my weight for a long time. And I do want to say, you know, as much as it is, you know, being consistent about your health and your fitness, you know, trying to make things a routine, you know, there's a lot of factors that play into this. You know, there's societal barriers, you know, there's mental barriers, you know, financial barriers. There's a lot of things that, you know, make being in a consistent routine and things like that difficult you know work schedules time allotments you know there's there's so many different aspects and that's why we have these pillars at cchs why we take a topic down every week you know sorry <laughs> done with the y raises i said them but it's like you know you know the, the financial there's social there's so many different things that play into what health and fitness is it's not just nutrition it's not just fitness you know that's what we try to break it up so I see we got some comments in the chat. I'm about two weeks behind the CCHS program, so I'm going to modify and rejoin the live workouts. Hey, that's awesome, Forrest. I mean, hey, those 45-minute workouts, in my opinion, are almost tougher than some of these. So, oh, that's awesome. And Luke, while well, I'm out on PST, so y'all are up earlier. It was like the opposite. I was basically like a skinny pup and always wanted to get bigger. I mean, it's the same thing both ways, you know, trying to gain the weight, lose the weight. It goes both ways. It is, it's always, you know, very tough. But all right, last, last move. And we can talk as much as you guys want. Three, two, one, quick feet. Come on, last round. Get these arms pumping. Get those legs pumping. These last 40 seconds here. Remember, you can modify. You just get moving the pace. Maybe you're going a little bit higher knees. Maybe you're really cramping it up. You got to do what's good for you. I know we're getting towards the nitty gritty here at the end. We're getting fatigued. We're getting a little tired. A lot of mental toughness here. Great job. Last 10 seconds. Come on. Good work. Five, four, three, two, one. Done. Great, great job. All right, everybody, can you believe it or not, day 131 in the books. This is week 36 of this exercise program. So awesome, awesome stuff. Whether you're joining in for the first time or the 100th time, you know, that is a tough workout. Something to be proud of whether you got through half of it, a core of it, full thing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting you know, Connected CHS. Yeah, great, great job, everybody. Um, give it up for yourselves. We're going to go through a quick cool down, but then we're going to be talking a little bit more about fitness, talking a little bit more challenge of the week, and also a little bit of live live uh, content for you guys. Anybody can ask me a question here. I'm going to be actually for my fitness. I love foam rolling. So I decided, hey, we're going to talk a little bit about the benefits of foam rolling. And I'm even, if you guys say, hey, you know, how do you release 
you know, your calf with a foam roller? How do you, you know, release your back with a foam roller? I'm going to be doing some live examples. You know, you want a muscle, you want something you can do with a foam roller to help, you know, loosen something up. I'm going to break it down live for you on the spot. So definitely don't want to miss out on that. But let's, you know, let's get a quick cool down going in here first. So, all right, for a little bit of cool down, let's shake out the upper body a little bit. Like using some dynamic stretches here. Right arm over, left arm over. Kind of letting the shoulders do their thing. Just shaking them out. So it's almost like you're giving yourself a hug, giving yourself a pat on the back after a hard workout. So really, really good job of that, everybody. All right, now we're shaking out the arms a little bit. We're going to be working on those T-spine rotations, except with a little bit of a twist, getting a little bit of the shoulder into it. So same thing, arms still out in front like, a, like you're driving a bus, except now you're going to be rope going that arm above head, Boof. and then coming back. Four in the one, we were just going out to the side. Now you're getting a little bit of that shoulder. I'm going to show from the side a little bit easier. Same thing, I'm bringing that shoulder above. I'm opening up, trying to almost expand my arms this way. I'm going to get a little bit of rotation in the hips. Then you just come back, get back in that driver's seat position. I don't know. This one, this one might feel like a workout on its own, you know, at this point. That's one thing I always tell my clients, you know, it's tough. Nobody wants to do shoulder mobility after hitting some upper body lifts. You know, you got to restore that range of motion back and you don't want to be going through the rest of your day with, you know, some tight shoulders, feeling like you can't move too much. Got to gotta open things back up after that workout. Great job with that one. We're going to be moving into the hips a little bit. This one we can be grabbing on to a wall. Same thing. Hopefully you got some space right here. I barely got enough room, but we're making it work. I'm just grabbing it onto the wall again with this leg swing. You get that hip moving. Same thing. Just really, really love this stretch. And it's kind of like arms just kind of letting the legs swing like a pendulum. Getting things moving right here. Go to work. Same thing. Switch it up on that other leg now. Get that other leg swinging. Great, great job, everybody. Keep going, not too much longer. We got a few more moves in here. All right, great job with that. We're gonna be working on the quads and the hamstrings here. So right here with the quads, gonna be kicking that knee out a little bit. Just like you're trying to kick a soccer ball as lightly as possible. Same thing, getting, restoring some of that range of motion back there in the hips and the quads. And same thing, I'm going to show you another variation. If you want to go from the ground, works just as effective in both ways. But down on the back, just kicking that knee up here. Same thing, go with the other side. Same thing, and yeah, and if you're doing that sitting down, remember the same motion. And again, with the hamstring, we're going to be doing the kind of similar motion, just going the opposite side of the leg. We did these in the warm-ups. Bringing that heel to the butt. Doesn't got to get all the way. You're just bringing it up, kind of restoring that range of motion back a little bit here. And again, if you want to go from the ground, not necessary at all, but, you know, you could just do the same thing, laying on the ground bringing the heels, you know, to the butt. Great work, everybody. So I thought I saw a piece of glass on the ground. It was not a piece of glass. Just don't want anybody stepping on that or anything. But, all right, we're going to work on the neck a little bit here. And then we're going to call that for the warm-up. Talk a little bit about here, foam rolling, fitness pillar, and, you know, always answer any other questions, comments, concerns that any of you might have. You know, this one is going to be looking over the shoulder, side to side. Just getting that neck moving. 
Stretching it out a little bit. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, neck feeling pretty good. Got a little bit of cool down in here. Great job, everybody. Day 131 in the book. So let's talk a little bit about our topic of the week and our quote of the week. You know, I already kind of mentioned it. Topic of the week. We're talking about fitness here today. And our quote of the week is health cannot be divorced from strength. And, you know, why we have that is the quote is, you know, we all want to be healthy. We all want to, you know, live long and happy lives. But, you know, to some extent, you know, physical strength is going to be a part of it. And like I said, you know, it's not like, you know, you need this. You know, you need to be able to deadlift 500 pounds to be healthy. That is not what we're saying. But, you know, one of these main thing is, you know, as far as being independent, is, you know, having the ability to perform activities of daily living, having the strength to carry out those things, you know, having that strength, you know, in the arm to be able to reach up a little bit overhead. I'm not saying you got to be, you know, full extension overhead. You still got to have enough strength, you know, to be able to, you know, get things that are above your head height. Even, you know, putting on a jacket or something to some extent could be, you know, a difficulty is if, you know, you don't have, um, you know, the strength or mobility in those movements to perform some of these tasks. And now same thing. You know, so that's why we just want to make it a goal, you know, have have some sort of strength strength goal for yourself. You know, obviously we're going to have physique goals, but, you know, maybe it's just doing something that, you know, you weren't able to do. Maybe you say, hey, you know, I've never been able to, you know, walk for a half a mile, you know, without, you know, my legs hurting or something like that. You know, or maybe, you know, maybe even something I've worked with clients that, you know, that even standing for long periods of time can be, you know, a difficult situation for them or bring them joint pain, things like that. And so, you know, even being able to, you know, being able to stand up for the whole entire workout was, you know, a great, um, you know, goal and a great, you know, strength, almost, you know, thing to look forward to is like, Hey, it was easier to stand through this workout than it was last week. You know, that's still a big, big improvement, especially for somebody, you know, if that being, you know, a difficult task for you to be able to, you know, make such a big stride like that for being, you know, for it to be painful to stand for a moment to not being able to stand, you know, for that um, period of time, you know, that's, that's a pretty big step. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. And, you know, obviously, since we're talking about mobility, talking about fitness, as I want to talk a little bit about foam rolling, this could be great for, you know, increasing mobility, getting some blood flow to the joint or to the um, tissue not to the joint, but, you know, it can be beneficial. There's ways it can be useful, ways it might not be useful. So um, let me just, oh, wait, be back in two, two seconds. I thought I brought this down. I guess I did not. But here, this fifteen, oh, this fifteen dollar piece of foam that I got. Oh, I see we're getting some comments in the chat. Uh, I feel so relieved and loosey goosey. But I thank you so much. But I got to take a shower. Work in that hour and a half. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to watch y'all you know, ankle videos. Those ankle videos next time because my ankles are busted. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna have a TikTok. Actually, I'm not even joking. We planned on having, you know, some social media words about ankle mobility, things like that nature. But, you know, thank you again, Luke, stopping in. Really appreciate the support. Really appreciate you being here. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. So a little bit about foam rolling. I talked about it a bit. So if you guys don't, I'll leave it open. You guys want to see, hey, how do you release those ankles? How do you release the calves? You know what, well, Luke, if you want to, after work, if you want to check out the end of this video, I'm going to put some ankle and calf mobility stuff in here just for you. In case you want to check that later because I know you got to go. But, you know, besides that, we're going to just do a little bit of ankle, a little bit of calf mobility with the foam roller. You know, if you guys want to see some back, see some shoulder, anything like that. And even if you don't, I'm still going to bust out some moves for y'all. So, you know, maybe you have some ideas. I'll be honest. 
Um, the phone mode was one of the best investments, at least in my opinion, that I've made as far as, you know, what you get for your dollar. I think this is literally a big piece of foam. I literally got it on Amazon for somewhere between $10 and $15. And I've had it for multiple years and used it for a ton of different things. So <laughs> I'm not trying to, you know, shill um, foam rollers on you. Um, obviously, I'm definitely not partnered with Amazon. So you don't kind of worry about that. I'm not trying to sh shill you some, um, you know, product that I don't use myself or something I don't think is worth your money. But, you know, something that also depends how you use it. So I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit just so it's easier to see for you. Look at that. How often you get a little foam roller tutorial at the end of your workouts. Mixing it up a little bit. So many ways to use the foam roller to add mobility. Let's just demo a few exercises. Making some more videos and things like that for our social media about this. But, you know, why not get a live one in here, too? And I was hoping maybe, maybe we do get some questions. Come on forth. I know you're in here. What, what muscle you want to see release? Or maybe you say, hey, man, how do I stretch my back out? How do I do this? Let's start here. One of my favorite things to do with the foam mower is to work on the upper back. So what I'll kind of do is I'll kind of take my body off the ground. I'll try to find an area that I feel is a little bit tight, a little bit locked up. You know, something you don't really want to be going into your low back here with this one. That could be a little bit painful, but right here in that upper mid back, you know, can be a great area. And so one thing I have to do is kind of support the head, um, you know, with the hands. And I'll just kind of bend my back over, you know, the foam roller. Because like same thing, a lot of desk jobs, a lot of things to anxiety, you know, cause it's kind of be hunched forward, rolled forward, or spine to kind of have that curvature. You know, so this is one way to kind of, you know, you're not going to, you know, almost undo um, what you're doing on a daily basis, especially if you have a desk job. You know, these could be great even doing these, you know, multiple times a day. So I'm just keeping my, you know, back kind of still. I'm not trying to, you know, arch through the low back. I'm trying to keep the low back, the rest of my core or rest of my spine besides, you know, the upper back still. And then just trying to move, you know, from that point on the foam roller. Same thing, just kind of bending forward and back. And same thing, maybe you, you know, roll down an inch or two and then roll that kind of another, you know, vertebrae, maybe roll down a little bit. You know, so what I really like to do, you know, a great way to kind of loosen up that upper mid back of the foam roller is to, you know, get, you know, bending over, you know, a few different points in the back, maybe a five reps or so, you know, at each different spot. That's one way you can work the spine. Mm -hmm. Same thing, anybody send a comment. Question, what do you want to see release? What muscle you interested about? So, I mean, and maybe if it's not even about that, just shoot a question in here. I'm always happy to answer um, your questions. So this is one I said I was going to put in here for Luke with a little bit of that calf and, you know, ankle um, mobility. Just, you know, kind of not necessarily go hand in hand, but, you know, tight calves usually mean tight ankles in my experience. But one way I really like to release the ankle a little bit is, you know, put that calf right there on this foam roller. You can even put the other leg over so you can kind of put a little bit more weight on the calf. And here, I'll actually do this one. It'll be a little bit easier to see. So I'm just putting the calf on there. Then so I'm kind of getting down on my hip. And same thing. Sometimes even just holding this position, pressing down with this leg onto the other one, just rolling the ankle in place can really start freeing up some of those muscles in the calf. And then you roll both ways. You will be feeling this one sometimes, especially, you know, on this front side. You know, work on that anterior tip. And you can just, you can really get in there. It's a little bit painful. You know, can't be at first to see. We got a question in the chat. Would using a foam roll at the upper mid back help with spine ache in the lumbar? Um, that's a great question for it. So um, to answer your question, um, I, I hate giving this answer, but it is it is the answer more, more, more of the time than it isn't in how the fitness is, that it depends. Because, you know, without knowing ex the exact source of the back pain and why you might be having some pressure in the low back, 
you know, could um, could be a lot of things. In my experience, so sometimes a lot of, you know, mid and or so sometimes some, you know, lumbar pain, you know, some of the times it could also just be from, you know, tight hips, you know, the glutes not firing correctly. It could be even be core, um, you know, just stability and things like that too. So there is a lot of factors. Um, you know, it's it's almost one of those things where it's almost like I don't think it can. I don't think it would hurt. You know, to be it might not. You know, call help with the pain. You know, if the spine is really, you know, just kind of maybe that pressure in the low back is from that spine. You know, being you know having uh you know too much of a forward posture and things that also does affect the hips and things like that well so you know it could help you know it's hard to say for certain without knowing you know exactly what's causing the back pain without being able to you know assess it um you know with my eye but i will show you know something that i think might be a little bit more likely to you know help with um some back pain is kind of releasing some of these surrounding muscles here in the hips it can be a great variation this one, I'm gonna be honest with you. Not the most fun variation. Oh, I see. Um, I was also going to ask whether foam roller can help with hamstring after floor touches slash hinge movements in particular. Yeah, especially if you're experiencing some soreness in the hamstring. Um, you know, after doing some of those floor touches, you know, definitely, you know, these can help. You know, return some of that blood flow, maybe loosen things up, especially even, you know, if those hamstrings are feeling pretty tight after, you know, some of those movements. So I'll actually show you a few things in here for us. Here's one of the ones that I will say, this is a good hamstring stretch that could even be paired with this a little bit. I'm just going to bring the camera up. So, um, actually, sorry, I'm going to take my shoe off so I don't put it on the couch. So... One variation I really like is, you know, putting, you know, the leg up on a surface like there, keeping a bent knee, not like locking the knee out like that. Keep a little bit of the bent knee and then, you know, kind of putting your heels, like I'm putting my heel into the couch and I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm not going flat foot. I'm kind of toe up, heel in the couch and pulling backwards. Almost like you're going to do that, you know, deadlift slash floor touch pattern. I'm almost like trying to pull my glute or trying to pull my hip away from my hamstring. It'd probably be better to see from this side, but let's see, bent knee. It's like I'm going up like this and I'm kind of trying to pull my butt back. I feel this almost instantly in the hamstring. This is a great way. And you do the same thing. If you turn that foot out a little bit to the side and do it, you might be feeling it in the hamstring a little bit. No more. That's just a little quick kind of stretch. There for the hamstring. So it's a foam roller though. Same thing. There's some really good variations. Right here. I gotta move the camera back down. You know, same thing, just getting that blood flow if that tissue is really, you know, locked up. A lot of times I will be honestly, the the foam roller might be a little bit more, you know, kind of short-term release. Um, or especially if it's symptomatic, if you know, if it's something that's actively bothering you. Know, can help with that but you know it's not i would say you know uh you know fix all thing but you know as far as symptom relief things that can be very helpful i think one thing sorry let me explain what i'm doing so one way you can kind of work the hamstrings a little bit this one is kind of tough to do you know pretty much just sitting on the foam roller and rolling back and forth a little bit you know, especially where those hamstrings connect in right to the bottom of the glute so, you know, kind of, you know, sitting a little bit on that area, same thing, even going, you know, one leg at a time, one way I kind of like to do it, it's a little bit weird to sit on it, um, but, you know, kind of have on the ground, and I just kind of have one leg underneath it, and I'm kind of just, you know, rolling it out a little bit, getting some sensation into that hamstring, but, you know, again, same thing, I always like to say, you know, it depends, but the same thing, the hamstrings might be you know, tight from, I mean, if they're feeling it after the floor touches, it might be because those hamstrings are a little bit shortened. You know, sometimes those hamstrings can be tight because they're too long or too elongated. And so, you know, releasing them with foam rolling things can you know, potentially have an inverse effect in that situation. But if you're saying that, you know, this is almost like a tightness post um, doing those floor touches, then yeah, I definitely think, you know, that is a factor. And, 
you know, that does make me think, you know, I think I should do a little bit more hamstring kind of cool down stuff because we do have a lot of hamstring work, you know, with the squats, with those deadlifts, I mean, the floor touches. So, you know, just one thing to keep in mind. But yeah, the hamstring, one way to roll it out, you know, pretty much sitting on with both hamstrings. That can be good. It could be a little bit harder to kind of get into that hamstring or same thing. You can kind of go one leg right here. You know, it's a little bit weird, you know, getting onto it from there. But yeah, another great one that I think is great for the one by this position, I will be honest, can be pretty hard to get into, you know, in the first place. Um, but this is one I really like um, for just kind of freeing up those hips and things a little bit. But um, another way, so like front of the leg, same thing. Oh, that doesn't really, can't really see what's going on. But, um, so like say I have the foam roller there, I have one leg completely off the foam roller, you know, put the other leg on. And same thing, you can kind of go onto your forearms and roll across that front of the hip. That one hurts a little bit. <laughs> I mean, all these, I'll be honest, it does, it's not like I would say painful. It depends how much pressure you're putting in, but you know, you're, you're breaking up some of that tissue a little bit, mobilizing things. So, you know, there, there can be a little bit of discomfort. I would say, obviously you don't want to be doing anything that's super painful, anything like that, but you know, just showing some ways how you can use this bone more, free up the back, free up the calves, free up the calves. There's a lot of them, just, you know, ramble through a few more. Um, and then we showed some calf circles, you know, we do kind of put the calf in and just move the ankle around. We showed some back opening ones, showed some hamstrings, showed some quad. Um, yeah, let's show a little bit of, you know, some shoulder, shoulder ones that I kind of like a little bit. Here's one, you know, that I think can be pretty good. The same thing, just kind of rolling across you know, these lat muscles up at the top. The same thing, sometimes you don't want to put a lot of pressure in here. This one could be a little, this, a little uncomfortable with, you know, sometimes just rolling in, so I can't really see, but I kind of have this um, foam roller kind of right in this area. And I'm just kind of rolling up and down that lat. Sometimes this lat can be really tight and, you know, might affect your overhead range motion. So being able to, you know, get some more of a stretch you know, through that back and potentially help with some overhead, you know, aspects as well. Um, same thing, there's some other ways you can kind of use this, you know, as a tool, not really, you know, for mobility. Um, here's another one that I kind of like here, requires a little bit of mobility. The same thing, you kind of use this, roll out the shoulders. And same thing, you can kind of get a little bit of some shoulder stretches with this. The foam roller. It's very versatile in my opinion. You know, there's there's hundreds of different stretches, exercises, things you can do for that name with that name. Let's see if we got our tongue here. Yeah, thanks. It's really it's really helpful. Hamstrings definitely get a workout. Yeah, this is it's pretty intensive on that posterior chain. And you know, one thing I will say for myself and I think a lot of people included, is that because we're almost always in like a forward, you know, um, you know, same thing, we're working, we're, we're always almost in a forward tilt a little bit just because of the way society is, you know, to some extent, you know, with technology and things. So it's like we've almost, at least what I've seen, I don't want to generalize everybody, but I've seen more times not a lot of people are more quad dominant than hamstring dominant because, you know, if we're slightly more forward, we're going to have a little bit more tension on the front side, a little bit more elongated on, you know, the back side um, with the hamstrings. So we might be kind of overusing the quads compared to our hamstrings just in everyday activity. So I can say for myself, you know, my quads are definitely a lot stronger than my hamstrings. Um, you know, that's just kind of the way, I'm assuming it's not the way everything is, but, you know, if you're constantly, you know, in a sitting position because of your job or your work or, you know, whatever, then, you know, that's going to play a factor in, you know, your length tension relationships, you know, in your quads and your hamstrings. So. I know I'm kind of just rambling, but yeah, now that's a really good point for us. I'm actually going to make a very specific point. You know, let's have a little bit more in there for the hamstrings because they definitely do, you know, take a little bit of a beating in these workouts. Um, but yeah, no, great, great point there. 
And so, um, yeah, I know I've been kind of rambling about form. There's a lot of ways you can use it to release some different muscles and things like that. I know it's not the most research based. I know we talked about a little bit about the research on foam wars about how, you know, it's a lot of these effects can be a little bit more short term. You might be able to release something so then you can kind of re educate it a little bit, get better movement. And then, but same thing if, you know, a lot of times I used to just, you know, roll things out and, you know, get all loose and then I would like go to bed and then sleep all contorted and then. It's like, okay, cool. Made my tissue more adaptable for me to, you know, sleep like this under my pillow. So it depends what your intention. If you're doing it to, you know, just general, you know, bring down some general tension in the body or, you know, things of that nature. But, you know, if you, you have a lot of shoulder pain and then you're like, oh, I'm just going to go release my shoulder. You know, your shoulder might have been in pain for a reason. Just releasing that tissue, you know, might not just make it necessarily go away. So, you know. Definitely just, I'm just saying, you know, be careful, take anything with a grain of salt. Um, it's not like it's going to be good for everything. It definitely does have its benefits, but, you know, if you have any specific questions, you know, send us an email, send us a message. Um, you know, obviously love to help. And I know I'm definitely going a little bit over, dang, hour and a half stream today. Wow, I've been, must have been rambling today or something. But, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit about the foam roller. Um, Another cool thing, I don't suggest doing this, but I've had this exact foam roller for probably like over five years now. And I hope I'm losing my balance, but I got pretty good at just standing on this just because I've had it for so long. So you can look at that a little circus show. I can't even walk on this thing. Maybe you not. Know, that's not a good stretch. It's not really useful for anything. Just something random. I just kind of want to show off a little bit because. How often do you get to show people that you can walk on a foam roller? Not very often, but something I just randomly learned how to do, just messing around with it for so long. So <laughs> there's your trick of the day from CCHS. I gave you the trick of the day. Let's talk a little bit about our challenge of the week. So let's keep our body moving this week. This week, we are challenging you to get your steps in with a daily walk, whether it's a quick five-minute power walk around the block, even around your house, or, you know, maybe you're going for a longer, you know, 30-minute stroll in the park. You know, whatever it is, we want you to strive, you know, just keep your body in motion every day this week, even if you don't get it through the stream. I mean, if you're getting through the stream, you are definitely getting your motion in this week. But, you know, even if you got a day off, I challenge everybody, you know, try to at least, you know, get a quick walk in, even if it's five minutes, you know, as, even if it's around your house, you're just walking, you know, around the living room, doing circles, you know, whatever it is, get some, get some steps in here today. We're goal, making this a goal. You know, get a little bit of movement in here every single day this week. Let us know how you feel. Let us know how that challenge is going. No, I went really far over today. So thank you all for being here. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, yeah, Jacob signing out. Thank you again. You know, fourth, everybody, Luke, everybody came in today. Um, just want to say thank you, man. Really appreciate the support. Just love doing this thing. So I'm sorry to cut this short, but... You know, thank you again, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Jacob's.